Welcome to episode 86 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. This episode is part of my series, Dad Talk, and I've invited Davey Parrish to have a chat. What's this series about? I'm glad you asked. I'm inviting everyday dads on the show to talk about what's important to them. Episodes may range from a little bit of Liberty Talk to a whole lot or even none at all. This series is all about raising the voices of dads and listening to what they have to say. And that means you may hear some dads discuss ideas that you disagree with. And that's okay. Their voice is important and you cannot raise the voice of another if you spend time shutting them down. In this episode, Davey is in studio with me and we discuss the topic of peaceful parenting. It was this topic that initially led to the Dad Talk series. I was really curious about it and, in the process, came up with the idea for Dad Talk. With that, let's dive in and hear what Davey has to say. All right, so thank you everybody for listening in. I've got Davey Parrish here. And by the way, we are both dads, obviously. This is Liberty Dad, Dad Talk. And we happen to have both of our sons here. And we are on dad duty simultaneously while we are recording the show. So you will probably hear them bust in every so often and just show us exactly what they've been up to. They've been playing with some building blocks and they keep coming in saying, check out this ladder, daddy, check out this ladder. We're like, wow, that's a really great ladder. You're the best <laughs> ladder builder ever. So that's what's going on. You'll hear some interruptions. That's what it means to be a Liberty Dad. So Davey Parrish here. We're going to talk about peaceful parenting. He is going to tell me all the ins and outs about it. And who knows, maybe I'll walk away and say peaceful parenting is the only way to parent. But let's get into it. Find out what uh, what is it about Davy that we should know? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what, what are the know exciting things? We're on a date. Let's just say we're on a date, and you, I'm like, so oh. tell me about yourself. Oh, then I never do the talking. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So <laughs> I do funny. all the listening. Like, I do Wasn't listening. quite prepared for that one. That got me on that one. So all right. So I know that you do welding. Yeah. Uh, so what kind of hobbies do you do? Um, what, ho- uh, podcasting. He's a oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> podcaster everyone so you're mm-hmm. a fellow podcaster which basically means you're a libertarian yeah and what's your show about what tell me about your show uh, what is it about who knows it's about really nothing okay it's really just uh uh it was at one point in time it was more of a cerebral show where we talked about the ins and outs of uh the non-aggression principle mm-hmm. it has become more of uh just hanging out with friends gotcha so hey that's good and these times i mean people need to hang out with more friends yeah. Uh, especially you people on Liberty Twitter. Um, <laughs> at any rate, so you got the podcasting going on. You're a welder. Uh, what else? Tell, you know, just just what kind of interesting things? There's got to be something interesting in there yeah. that everybody's going to be blown away about. And they're just going to be like, wow. Blown that's really, away by. Just blown away. I, I don't know. I mean, um, other than work, podcasting, and being a dad, I don't really know. All right. Well, there it is. There it is. You know, sometimes that is the life, and that's kind of what I got going on. I got work, and I got podcasting, and I got being a dad, Mm. and every now and then, throwing a little sleep, (laughs) Yeah. uh, you know, if I can. You know, usually you just wake up, and you're like, I don't know, coffee. So, all right, so we're going to talk about peaceful parenting, and it's very interesting. A little bit of background for uh, that that people uh, may not realize. I put the call out a while back, and I was like, hey, you know, I want to talk to somebody uh, about peaceful parenting, and I got a lot of people responding, and not everybody was necessarily responding with, you know, I- I'm a peaceful parent, and I can tell you all about it, but there was just, because I, I kind of put a simultaneous call out to for peaceful parents and for people that, you know, dads that wanted to, to talk about whatever, mm-hmm. and so I got a, a lot more responses than I was expecting, and ultimately, out of the several people that, uh, that I was looking at, I, I went with Davey because we've got a very minor, very small history to, uh, having a conversation about peaceful parenting on Facebook. I think we had a little bit of a debate, and it was really not about peaceful parenting so much as it was a study that I just happened to disagree with. Sure. Um, so, so tell I me. All this now. Oh yeah, I, I. So sadly enough, I don't remember anything that I hear, but I remember everything that I see and read. Oh. So, well, I mean, gotcha. not not quite everything, but a lot more, much much more. So, what is peaceful parenting? Kind of like just take us A to Z on that. Uh, yeah, well, I don't really know the definitions because mm-hmm. I'm not really a, a big follower of uh, anyone that uh, preaches peaceful parenting. Other right. Than I've read some stuff and was like, you know, that makes more sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, just roundabout long way ago. Grow up, I was not peacefully parented. Okay. You know, there was definitely spanking, all this other things, yelling, whatnot. Um, 
for whatever it is. I'm not saying it's wrong or bad. I just know it didn't really affect me the way I, I acted. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, okay, it didn't affect the way I acted in the way they were wanting to. Okay. What it did was teach me how to not get caught and how to uh, play a different role when I needed to. Gotcha. Uh, and I'm like, well, is that the is that really what the outcome I'm looking for mm-hmm. for my child to um, play a role when he's with me gotcha. and be someone else, be himself later on. Gotcha. I'd rather my son be himself all the time. Right. Um, and be a good self. R- right. Right. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, would you, uh, anything, what would you, you say it's mainly the spanking. That's usually okay. the hot button topic. On right. The peaceful parents. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say is justified to spank your child? And then it's like, would I also do this with my spouse or mm-hmm. my friends? Okay. Because um, he is just a small human. Mm-hmm. He's still a, a person. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of times people treat children differently just because they're not de- fully developed. Okay. And just because they're not developed doesn't mean that they're not, you know, they're going to be developed one day. Hopefully. Right. So I would like to develop, have them develop as a, Full human, mm-hmm. as I expect them to be when he's an adult. Right. Uh, and c- I kind of treat him as such now. Obviously, you, you, I don't have the same expectations I would of um, my partner as I do my child. Cause, sure, sure. You know, but uh, I, in general, I just let him be a human. Okay. And I don't, and I would treat him this, pretty much the same way I would treat anyone else. And I don't, you know, resort to violence with other people. Okay. And I don't see a reason to resort to violence when it comes to him. Is there a when it when it comes to talking about like hey we're we're peacefully parenting, is it is it that there's a primarily a difference in how in in the discipline area, or does it start elsewhere? I'm sure it starts elsewhere. Um, I'm also not a uh, as we talked earlier off uh, air about helicopter parents. I'm right. not a helicopter parent. Okay, I he's got a lot of free reign to figure life out. And uh, he can try a lot of different things out that some people might be like, I don't know about that. You know, like give him some tools. No, obviously, I'm not going to give him a saw right, or something. But, I mean, he's got a small, lightweight hammer or something mm-hmm. like he, like your son. And, you know, just simple tools. Let him okay. explore. Let him play with things and just feel it out for himself um, instead of just saying, oh, no, it's too dangerous. Gotcha. Or when he won't like climbing on things, it's like climb you're probably gonna fall you're probably okay. gonna get hurt it's okay to get hurt um right. it's okay to have a couple bumps and bruises so you know these things are fine mm-hmm. it's part of life right and i mean i get hurt all the time at work i mean so and he knows it right like so is is and and, and i'm gonna try not to play this as 20 questions we'll have sure. some back and forth and maybe i'll have some opinions here and there uh but first of all, i want to kind of establish kind of like what what peaceful parenting is so that i'm not just talking about what i think it is mm-hmm. and i think that you know i i we were having this conversation earlier and one of the things that my wife and i have done is to give our son as much freedom as we can possibly give him and there's been a few times where i've been like am i setting myself up for trouble later like <laughs> I, and i've mentioned this in a prior podcast where i was you know lifting my my son's legs to go up and down the stairs you know i was teaching like he could barely crawl and here i am i'm like he he kind of crawled over to the stairwell, and I was like, well, might as well learn how to do it now. I'm going to have to do it. You know, he's going to have to sometime. Well, I mean, he's going to do it himself, regardless right. of if you help him or not. You also just showed him a safe way to do it. Right. Because, you know, you, there's a lot of things to experiment in life, mm-hmm. um, you know, from different foods to climbing up ladders and stairs right. and whatever else there is. Um, and there's a safe way to do things, and there's unsafe ways to do it. Right. So if you're guiding him in a safe way, I don't yeah. Now, now, what happens when there's a conflict between what you want your son to do and what your son wants to do? Mm-hmm. Because I have that. Let's see. When was the last time? Yeah, every day. <laughs> like every day, there's yeah. something that he doesn't want to do, and sometimes we can coax him into it. We can, you know, like maybe mom will come in and be like, "Oh, is, you know, Zach, we need to do this." Or sometimes, uh, where we, it's kind of a little bribery game. We're like, "All right, well, you know, how about you know." And, and it's not always like food or candy or something like that. Sure. Sometimes the bribe is just like, hey, 
you like this airplane? We'll play with this airplane, but first you got to do this, right? So it's, you, you know, and I guess it's manipulation, I guess, if you want to get it at its core. I, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's, it's like everything else. It's a reward system. Right. Uh, we, as adults, have, we use those same reward systems to do most things. Right. Even if it's just like a dopamine rush or right. uh, getting paid from your job. But like you said a moment ago, and I'm going to, I'm, we'll challenge back and maybe it'll get tense, maybe it won't. We'll see. But, you know, I know you said a moment ago you try to, and, and, and I think, and, and I'm going to go somewhere specific with this. Okay. I know you said that, hey, he's just a little human. We want to try to approach it in as much as we would an adult, but recognize that he's not yet an adult. So there are some limitations. And I would, my wife would never come in and say, hey, would you like a beer? Well, if you want a beer, then you need to go and take out the trash. Right. So like, I, I feel like there's a, there's this. There's kind of definitely like, a difference. Yeah, and 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 I and I and I think that's where people get caught up because it seems to me whenever I see a, a peaceful parenting debate, it usually is this: if you ever hit your kids, you're a terrible abusive monster. Or the other people say, "Well, if you don't hit your kids, spare the rods, spoil the child. Well, they'll just grow up to be this, you know, <laughs> sissy, nancy, pansy, whatever, blah blah blah." And it's just like this, and there seems to be no middle ground in there. And I'm like. Surely, there's middle ground in everything. There's got to be. I mean, it can't be that one or the other, right? It can't just be like if you ever touch your child, you're a you know an abusive person. But if but if you don't, then you're also a bad parent because you're going to let them grow up to be a, you know whatever. Well, I, I I can give you this kind of example. Unsure if she's will be happy me saying it, but my girlfriend she was not a peaceful parent when right. we first got together. Um, my son was like. He was like, why did she spank him? Right. You know? I'm like, I don't know. And he said it with her, and she was like, oh, I don't know. Right. And it was like, we had a conversation. I'm like, oh, we, I don't. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't, you know, think it's a great response. And we had a conversation. It's like, I never just, I've just never thought about it. Right. It's what happened to me. Right. So it just kind of goes on, and it's like, and now she practices mostly peaceful parenting. Okay. Now, obviously, it's not a, uh, uh, Thing that everyone's going to be able to do right off the bat. Sure, sure. And it's, I can't tell you, there's not been time. I, I All the time. Right. I definitely get angry. But it, it's, uh, whenever you talk to your partner in anger, uh, the conversation doesn't go well, right? Correct. It's usually best to, if you have a disagreement or something, or they do something to upset you, mm -hmm. to give it some time, cool off, think about it. Right. And then come back to it later. Um, what I've normally been able to do is just kind of like, all right, if we have to, we got to separate mm -hmm. for a moment, come back and we'll talk about what happened, if, right. whatever it might be. Or it, it spe a lot of it was right. during like potty training kind of stuff. Sure. Especially once he was in, of the age of being able to understand what's going on right. and know it was a wrong thing to do. Gotcha. So, you know, I think having a conversation with him, just like he's a regular person, has you worked. Gotcha. So is it, do, do most peaceful parents really just take all hitting off the table or is it like this goal that you strive for knowing that there'll be some imperfect times? Um, I don't really know what most people do. Cause I don't know if I know a lot of full, fully just peaceful parents. Mm -hmm. Um, I take it off the table. Okay. Cause I say, I, I would treat him at, like as someone in my family, you know, because he is my family. Right. It's like, would I be okay with, and it's it, it's really with most people. It's like, would I be okay with using force to change their opinion on whatever okay. subject or to punish someone? Okay. And I also don't do a lot of punishment, okay. so to say. Like, I don't do timeout. Okay. I don't do uh, spanking and things of that. It's usually just a conversation, and he and I will a lot of times lead the conversation, of course, because you know some, he, he's four years old, right? So it's a lot of leading the conversation to for him to find out what he realizing what he did uh, wrong, mm -hmm. and then why he shouldn't do it wrong, right? And then what we can do next time, and if it was something he did in anger, what we can do to direct this anger in a more positive. Uh, positive energy out right instead of just lashing out <laughs> it sounds like an awful lot for a four-year-old 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't, I, like my son's almost three. He's, he's a couple months until, until he's three. And I couldn't imagine trying to go through that. I mean, that whole process, it might sound complex, but it's probably something that people do every day with a friend or a significant other or maybe it's a family member. It's less complex than you, it sounds complex. So, so how does it work with a two-year-old? And, and what I mean by that is their response. I mean, if I told you about how I engage with my wife and I'm like, look, let's sit down. I'm re- this is not quite how I say I'm, I'm a little bit more spastic than people might realize. So I'm, I'm, you know, I usually talk a little bit louder, uh, usually talk faster, and sometimes I raise my voice. Uh, a lot of people perceive it as yelling. Um, when I'm yelling, you definitely know, but sometimes people confuse it as like, you're yelling, and I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just really upset right now. I'm just talking really fast. So what does it sound like between the both of you? Because if I told you one-sided with me and my wife, you probably could guess how she might respond, right, as an adult. But I can't imagine how a child would respond to all this. Uh, a lot of it is starts with, I don't know. Okay. Or, you know, did you hit him? Did you take his toy? Right. No. No. <laughs> of course, of course. Right. I, even if I witness it happen. Right, and right. And I'm like, yeah. okay. Well, you know, and then we, we have a big uh, talk about honesty, mm-hmm. things like that. And I'm like, you know, for anything else, you know, I'm like, well, first of all, if you're being honest with me in this Right now, you're not going to be in trouble. Okay. Even though I know what you did. Right. And I know, you know, but you're not going to be in. We've already know what, what you did. And we're going to we're going to have a corrective action for it, which is usually just rectifying the situation. Right. If you break something, he cleans it up himself. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. he gets it all. Of course, I usually have to go behind him because children aren't the greatest at cleaning. Sure, sure. But, uh, you know, or if he takes a ball, he has to or, or another toy from some, another child. Give it back to him, apologize to him, mm-hmm. or says something hurtful to some to an adult. You know, you got to right. own up for your actions. Are there times uh, that he refuses? Uh, he definitely <laughs> will will refuse. And how how does that work out? How does I'm, that play out? I mean, I'm like, okay. So then we go into a conversation. I'm like, all right. Well, what if you know Joe did this to you, and Joe decides he is not going to apologize to you? Will you feel bad mm-hmm. the rest of the day for this? It's usually yeah. Right, right. We're thinking about it on the other foot. It's like yeah, I'm. I don't want to be treated like that. Right. So okay, I'm. You know, I, I'll go ahead and uh, okay. apologize and rectify the situation. Right. So your son is four. So I imagine that he's got some. I don't. Know, I don't have a four year old yet. So I imagine that he's got some significant level of comprehension of these terms, and even if he doesn't fully understand them, right? Like sure. if you say, "Hey, did you apologize?" Like. He might just know, okay, I'm supposed to say I'm sorry, but does he know the actual full impact of that and how it makes somebody feel and all this other, like, empathy and all that? Like, is, is he really going to recognize all that? Probably not. My son is almost three, but I can assure you he can barely say the word apologize, let alone have any concept of what it means. You know, now I might say, hey, tell him you're sorry, and he's just going to repeat whatever I just told him to say. Of course. Um, but he has no concept of what it, what it is. So I guess my my challenge here is, how is it that when when a child like I say two two and a half maybe even three, how do they learn to understand that something is wrong before they get more aggressive? And I think that's probably people's concern. They they want to nip it in the bud, right? If my son were to smack another kid, most people would be like, "Look, you need to like spank him, you know, or smack his hand or mm-hmm. something like that." I mean, that, you know, people aren't necessarily like, you need to beat the snot out of him. Like, you know, that would be absurd. But, you know, a lot of people would be like, hey, he doesn't, he's not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to sit him down and be like, hey, you hurt Johnny. That's not very nice, blah, blah, blah. Because he's not, I, don't, they, I, I understand that kids understand a lot more than we realize. Mm. But, I, but, I, but I wonder, there is a point where it feels to me like the very rudimentary is going to be more effective in halting behavior before it gets worse until they get to a point where they can even somewhat understand so so tell me how that works when when they're younger well <laughs> I'm, I'm well aware when i first started doing this which was um since he's been able to move around and right do wrong so which is the second they start moving and are able to have any kind of be able to grab on stuff and get they're mainly just curious about okay it, right so a lot of it is you're just setting the boundaries of what okay. you are and are not allowed to do. What and it's usually just what is and is not harmful to you. Okay, right? Because uh, if it's not harmful to you, I don't see a whole lot of reason to tell you no. Sure. Um, 
limit screen time, mm -hmm. stuff like that. That's, you know, people will debate that all day if you want to make it sure. harmful or not. But yeah, yeah. Small pieces, <clears throat> I don't think, is are big issues. Right. But uh, um, when he's very young, it was, I know he had no concept of it. Mm -hmm. And I know I was really talking to the wind and right. it wasn't uh, doing anything, so to speak. Uh, but my logic on it is this. If I start young, mm -hmm. he's always heard these words. He's going to always hear these words from me. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll conversate about it and talk about it. And as he gets older and more uh, where he's able to understand these things, it, it's not a new concept. Okay. And we're not changing the way we handle things from uh, I slap your hand when you go to do this or I have a conversation with you. So if I have the conversation with with when it would have might have been easier mm -hmm. or he might have understood hand slap better. But I'm like, also my, uh, a big thing from where I come from it is, uh, I'm no, I'm jumping around a little bit. It's it's, okay. uh, a big, uh, motivator is as a parent, I think your, your job is to be the, the protector of your child. Right. Okay. You are to, you're teaching them, helping them become a, you know, I guess you're, your goal is probably to make them or help them become a, a, a functioning adult. Right. Um, but you're also, at this point in time, you're the protector. I could not imagine uh, someone trusting me being their protector if I've caused them harm. Okay. And if I've, and I, I, I know I've hurt his feelings plenty of times. Sure, sure. And I, at this point, I, I don't have to even raise my voice much. And I don't yell, okay. but I do get a more stern sure, to sure, the voice. Sure. And most people, especially dads that have, or, you know, anyone that's got, who had their dad around or whatever, your dad gives you that look and it's done. Right. You already right. know. Or you can give the child the look and they right. already know. Right, right. It, the look of disappointment's there or they know what's coming. Is that, what was that meme where the um, Samuel L. Jackson in, was it Black Snake Moan, where he's kind of standing there and he's like, yeah. He's got the white the wife beater on. He's like, yeah, you know, he's crazy kind of staring. Yeah, it's the crazy eye, right? Okay, I got gotcha. you. But it's a, um, I just don't want to change the way I approach things. Okay, because I think a consistent approach would probably be the best for a child. Okay, especially with the developing brain, and then it, he gets to he may have not not understood these words a year ago, and he may not fully understand them today, but he has a better understanding today than he did a year ago. Okay, and next year. This time he'll have a better understanding than he right. does now. So you're treating things like apology and, um, you know, don't do that and, you know, whatever. Those concepts, which may or may not have a single word to identify them, but you're treating them basically like car, crayon, mm -hmm. refrigerator, paper, right? You start out and you're like, this is a crayon. And they're like, oh, I'm going to eat this, <laughs> right? And, and so they, they have no, absolutely no concept of this crayon, right? They can't say the word. They don't know what it is. They don't know anything about it. They just immediately stuff it in their mouth. Right. And then eventually they see you drawing and they're like, I guess that's what you do with it. Mm -hmm. And you eat it. And then eventually <laughs> they're like, all right, I guess you don't eat it because I've never seen dad eat the crayon. So I guess I just draw with it right. on the wall. Yeah. Right. You know, <laughs> and never then, seen dad do that either. Right, right, right. And, and, and so, uh, you know, and then eventually they come up to you one day and they're like, dad, dad, crown, crown. Right. And then you're like, oh, you want the crayons. OK, great. And so then eventually, you know, it becomes dad, can I have the crayons? Right. And, you know, dad, I would like a blue crayon, you know, you know, hey, look, dad, I got four crayons. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and so then they just kind of as time goes along, they become they understand this this concept of this object more and more. And you're just applying lessons with an object to lessons with ideas sure yeah okay i mean <laughs> we want to communicate ideas i mean i think you should be able to communicate them the entire time okay you know i mean that's just kind of i guess goes from like a political standpoint too. sure sure uh just being effective at communicating what you right want out of things and then and that's another thing i want him to be uh, I, I don't i don't do whining talk if we start whining talk i'm like you know but oh, we don't gotcha. talk Right. At this time, we're not, you cannot, we cannot have a conversation. Right. You know, I don't listen to this. <clears throat> right. If you've got, if you're tearing up, crying about it, we're not having, we're not talking. Sure. And he's gotten to where he'll just, 
dry them up and just um, right. fight through them and talk. And right. like, okay, that is definitely improvement. Right. He's get, you know, because a lot of times children, a lot of adults do as well, respond okay. emotionally to a lot of right. things instead of the um, logical. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, you just got to know yeah. that's just human nature anyway. Our son does that. Like the other day, it was in the morning and he came over and we have a shelf downstairs that has all these um, games. They're, they're board games for like teenagers, adults, you know, whatever. So they're not his level. But he's got this box of Play-Doh that has all these like toy Play-Doh parts in it. And they're, they're it's like a dinosaur thing. And so mm. he comes over and he just was like, ah. And I was like, uh-uh, use your words. Right. And he was like, ah. And I knew what he wanted. Of course. And because there's only one thing on that shelf that is his. Yeah. The rest of them he doesn't play with. So I, I already knew what it was. And so then I was like, you want the Monopoly game? And then he like shake his head. And I'm like, do you want this? Do you want this? And he's like shaking his head. And I'm like, daddy doesn't know what you want. Yeah. I lied to him. Okay. So whatever. But I you know, I was like, daddy doesn't know what you want. So I guess you don't get anything. And then he was like, dinosaurs, please. And I right. was like, all right, there you go. So then I gave him to him, you know, and, and, and you know, cause I, I, we, and my wife does a kind of a similar thing. We're like, no, no, no. Use your words. We know you only, you know, have about a hundred of them, but use the hundred that you have. And then, you know, uh, and, and that's how you, and, and, and we don't give him anything, even if we know exactly what he wants. Yeah. And I think it's, I think, call it lying, call mm-hmm. it leading. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. It's what else can you do in that situation? Right. You, you, you gotta, you do have to treat them a little different than, right. You know, your friends. Right. But also, you know, I don't, I never once babied them, so to speak. Okay. From, from that kind of stuff. Like, uh, it was a big rule. No, no baby talk to my child. Okay. Any, to grandma's, everything, like no baby talk ever. Right. I don't want baby talk done to my child. I'm like, okay. how's that going to develop his, his right. vocabulary? It won't. Yeah, I don't think we did a whole lot. I mean, I don't think we didn't make an effort not to, but we didn't, we just naturally didn't do a whole lot because we were just like, you know, like there's a picture of me when he was like itty bitty baby in the bathtub, not the bathtub, but the uh, sink as a bathtub. Sure, yeah. And like he's literally in one of those little, you know, the things that you sit yeah. in the sink and he's sitting in there and he's like playing with like a rubber ducky. And there's a picture of me. And this really happened. I was reading him 1984 because um, I thought I was just going to amuse myself. And I was like, I'm going to read him this book, blah, blah, blah. Um, of course, as I was reading it, I was like, all right, maybe there's some ideas in here that maybe he don't need to hear just yet. A little, yeah, yeah, a little bit a little bit rough here. <laughs> but, but I, you know, and one of the things, I, where did I hear this from? That um, the more words that a child is exposed to, the better that they will end up being the, the better communicators or something along that line. But it was basically, it'll help de- develop their communication skills mm-hmm. better in the long term when you talk to them with as many words as possible. And there was some, like some study that said like kids that got more variety of words had a better vocabulary when they got older or something. I don't remember. Something like that. And so I kind of tried to do that. And of course, I go overboard because I'm sometimes just amusing myself. Right. You know? no, so, I mean, I can definitely right. relate. Sometimes I'll say words that I know that are just right. way out of his vocabulary right. range. And uh, honestly, sometimes maybe out of most adults' of vocabulary right. range. But I'm like, you know what? If I can get him to think of this word again, and re- and he has done it on like right. some words that I'm like, and he'll say it to someone. And I'm like, it's right. very funny to hear a four-year-old say right. that something like that and such a big concept. And then, because then he'll ask me what that word means. Right. And then I'll explain it. And then another word, what does that mean? What does that mean? And right. go into it. And he'll try to pick them up and use them. Yeah. And it's... You know what? I just realized something. You ever seen them post on Facebook or Twitter where they're like, my two-year-old just came in and said, mommy, are we getting vaccines now? Yay. Or some some <laughs> crazy nonsense like this. Yeah. Now I know how this happens. You, just, you tell it to the kid, then they repeat it. And then they're like, look what my kid just said. Right, right. Ah, I got this figured out. Now I know it's. I know. I know. Okay. Side note. Sorry. I just I realized. Like, oh, this is how. This it is how your happen. kid says crazy <laughs> political stuff. They just regurgitate what you just said. Yeah. You know, maybe you say it enough, and then they repeat it, and they're like, ha ha, mommy laughed. Yeah, I mean, I got him uh, <clears throat> enough to uh, when we uh, were at the Jorgensen event to uh, hand him the mic to let him say taxation stuff. Oh, nice. So, <laughs> does he know what it is? Absolutely not. But right, it's a good right. Thing to right. Have a clip on. We want to start somewhere. So right now. <laughs> So that's awesome. So okay, so so um I think 
and and I don't really divulge this much because I don't really want the hassle. I don't like people ter- telling me how to parent. Yeah. So I, I online, <laughs> I I generally I, I I even when I get involved in like like there's parents magazine like I, sometimes I'll chime in on that. I don't tell people how to parent their kids. Um, I know that. There were times when I was younger. My sister is six years younger than me. My brother is six years younger than her. So he's 12 years younger than me. And there were times where I didn't particularly think that the way that my parents were raising them. And they weren't doing anything bad. It's just like I disagreed with this, whatever they were doing. Sure. But I was like, it's not my kids. I need to stay out. Right? Like, And so I've kind of always held this approach. And then, of course, I want it reciprocated. I don't want people telling me how to raise my kids. So I don't usually put a whole lot of stuff out there um, just because I don't want to deal with the hassle. So, but the, what we've done, and just just give me your thoughts on this, and you can just—I mean, you know—we're having a good conversation, so I, you know, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. We, you know, my wife is conservative, so she's a little bit more. Uh, uh, le- she leans a little bit more toward the idea of spanking occasionally, mm-hmm. but neither one of us particularly like hitting our kid, sure. right? Um, I would say if you enjoy it, you should right. get checked out. But but I mean, and and when I when I say like, I mean more than just enjoyment, but even more, you know, with like if we can. My rule of thumb is if I don't need to, don't. Sure. You know, and so I've tried to limit it to what I think of are more extreme cases. So like safety issues. Like for me, I look at it and I say because we've allowed my son, our son, to um, have free roam. Uh, uh, we don't really. I mean. We'll put some boundaries, but there are a lot fewer. I mean, you know, I helped him climb up the stairs when he was like, I don't know, eight months old or something like that, right? <laughs> and so, and I, I didn't let him do it by himself, but, you know, we we introduced him to stuff. We let him explore, and we just kind of kept an eyeball on him. That's it. And that includes, like, in the kitchen where mm-hmm. I do my cooking. I, and I, and this is what I tell people, I'm like, I will smack my hand, son, I mean, I'm, smack my hand, smack my son's hands long before... I allow him to reach up and grab a hot pan. Okay. Right? Because to me, I, I you know, I, I even though I, I don't want to, I actively don't want to, to hit him. I don't even like yelling at him. Like sometimes I feel kind of bad that I, you know, if I yell at him, which I try not to do too much. I mean, I'm a little and, bit anxious. And I, honestly, I, can, anxious. I uh, uh, can definitely sympathize with what you just said on that. I've had plenty of times where I've, you know, got stern in the voice. Right. Where I think, man, I think I was too hard on him. Right. I think, and then I'll tell him, okay, I'm, you know, sorry. I, yeah. Maybe I was a little too much on that. Yeah. We had, we had one. <laughs> <laughs> my wife had a, so again, he gets free roam, a free, uh, free reign. Um, so my wife's at the counter downstairs. We have this like nice seven foot peninsula downstairs and that's kind of like the congregating area for everybody. Mm. And so my wife's sitting there with her laptop. She's drinking a glass of wine. I've got a glass of wine. He gets up. And he knocks her glass of wine over by accident. And she's like, you know, she's like trying to grab her laptop to make sure it's not getting all wet. And um, and what happened? I think I reached over to grab something. I knocked my glass of wine over. So now I'm spazzing out uh, because this is kind of my character. Like I can, I, I, I don't want to say I, I don't, I'm not like, um, I'm very reactive, but not in a like violent sense. Sure. I'm just kind of like, you know, okay. You got a little bit over exaggerated there in, in in your response, you know. But it's not like I throw something at somebody and like you mother effort, you know. It's not that that level. I just you know, I get animated quickly. Is I got a you. trait that I got from my mama, and um, so then all of a sudden I'm like, get on, get on right now. I'm yelling at him, and then he just flips out because like this all happened really really quickly. Right. He's not. He's unsure what happened. And right. And he didn't actually do anything wrong. So then he got mad. He gets mad, cries, and goes into his, his little toy room that he's got. And Chrissy's like, "Really, dude? Seriously?" And I was like, "She's like, you need you need to go to apologize." I'm like, "All right, yeah, you're right." So I go in there and I'm like, "Hey, buddy." I was like, "Daddy, sorry. Daddy, Daddy was a little bit over uh, um, animated on that one. He's you know." And he's like, mm, mm. "Of course." <laughs> and so I'm like, "Okay, Daddy deserved that one. <laughs> that, that Daddy, that one, that one's on Daddy. I, I got you, buddy." So I just left him alone. And then Christy was like, "You should get him one of his toys." A, like like a toy that we were gonna give him for Christmas, and I was like, "Really?" And she was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "No, he doesn't." And she, and she was like, "And I was like, okay." <laughs> she got so then <laughs> so then I come in, I'm like, "Hey, buddy," and I'm like, behind my back, and I'm like, "Peace offering," and he's still like, he's like, mm, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, "Buddy, you want want to look? I got a peace offering," mm-hmm. and it was this huge like dinosaur figurine, it was like like this tall, it was big, 
And he's like, dinosaur. And I was like, there you go, buddy. I was like, I'm sorry. You know, whatever. And I mean, you could tell he was still a little bit kind of like on edge and, you know, and I, it was totally my fault. Like I, I should have been a little bit, you know, less, a little bit more chill about it. Right. You know, so those are one of the, those are one of the times where I'm like, man, I look back and I, I go, you know, yeah, I wish I'd reacted better. I don't have a lot of those, you know, luckily, uh, just every now and then just enough of enough things happen all at once to create kind but of like also helps you perfect small storm realize things that you might need to work on yourself. Right. Like it's doing it, you know, reacting these ways or, you know, deliberately trying to do peaceful parenting. Right. Not respond emotionally to right. any uh, negative things that happen. Right. Um, it's helped me learn a lot of patience. Right. Forced, yeah. Forced me to learn patience and it's forced me to uh, stop and think in, in a more uh, what actually happened. Right. What are, What am I mad about? Right. How can I even explain this to a four year old? Right. And then or I mean, it's been his entire life of being, you know, for however old it was, right. he started getting around and getting into stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and it's not always easy. It's hard. Right. No, I'm never going to lie to you. It's hard. Right. To be, cause it'd be so much easier to pop them and be done. Right. But, uh, you know, I, I just don't want to go that path and it's, yeah. uh, um, helped me learn what I need to work on myself on right. how to approach things. Cause it's like, yeah, it, I shouldn't respond such mm -hmm. so hectically on something. It's just like uh, how you did on that. I've definitely responded that way. Right. And, and then there's times where I've, not. yeah, and then there's times <laughs> that I've done things that I actually even, even now I'm like, I don't regret that. Yep, um, sure. Like we were in the shower one time and we have a very small shower. Mm -hmm. So I was in there and he's in there with me and he's showering and he's, you know, jumping up and down or no, I'm sorry. That's not what he was doing was he was going through a stage and he would just out of nowhere, like just go into a frenzy, just be like, and then whatever. So we're in the shower and I don't know what set him up, but something set him off. And he's like, and he's like, you know, kind of, you know, mad and kind of start. Now I'm getting concerned because the bath, the shower that we have has a lot of sharp edges in there yeah, because of the way it's designed. And all I could imagine is you are in the wet water, you're jumping around, throwing a fit, you're going to slip and fall. Yeah. And so I reached down, gave him a, a one quick swat, swat on his butt. Not hard. Uh, not, I don't even think I left a mark. All right. I just, just like this, just enough to kind of get to his attention. And then I sat him down mm -hmm. and I said, stop. Mm -hmm. And then he calmed down enough mm -hmm. so that, I mean, he still was crying and upset and I, sure. I was going to be. Um, because for the most part, if he's crying and upset, I'm like, eh, I mean, he's, he's two or three. Like that's, you know, like he doesn't have control of his emotions. So right. I not really and i'm not going to go it. into what uh the most of the peaceful parents that i see online do which is like, like oh yeah he calmed down because he was shocked <laughs> right you know from the violence. well i mean so Listen, again i look at was, it I'm like it's a safety issue i would rather like i'll take heat all day long from somebody that says oh you just abused your child yeah well guess what my child also didn't bust his head against a yeah. sharp corner in a bathtub which he might very well have because people slip all the time in showers adults full-grown adults sure. slip and I didn't want him to slip. And you know, if he slips, again, it's going to happen so fast. Can I? Can I protect him? I don't know. If I'm lucky, yes. If not, no. No, yeah, you're you're just weighing options, right? And, and what you, you know, do. Um, but outside of like out, he, he, outside of anything that's a danger to somebody else or a danger to him, we don't really do much discipline. Sure. Sometimes I'll get upset with him if he's done something and he's not listening, and I'm like, go to your room. You know, uh, we have used timeout. In mm -hmm. fact, that was the, that was what we, <laughs> I remember we did timeout one time and he, uh, we put him on the chair and I didn't know any better. So I was like, Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. This was like when he was like one or something like that. You know, I just, and all I wanted him to do was to calm down from whatever he was doing. Sure. Right. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of isolate you from everything. Just sit, sit you here. And then I, and I stood there, I looked it up later and they say, um, one minute per year or something like that and i was like oh <laughs> i was like five minutes i guess was a long time you know uh and i, I think i still have that, that picture of one of the first times that he ever got in time out and he's all sitting there he's all like <laughs> he's kind of sad and uh you know and it's uh re i don't use timeout okay only for the reason of i hated it right so i don't want to do it gotcha because i hated it right and it i definitely had time out more times than i would you know, can never remember. Right. But it was, I hated it, so I don't want to do it. Yeah. So that's it. 
Oh, I don't see any issue right. with it so much because I mean you're just sit there, just calm down, yep. think about your actions. Um, seeing so that circumstance, so a lot of times what I do is I'm like, all right, we gotta go sit down. Right. We'll sit on the couch. We'll talk. Mm-hmm. You know, and if he's going crazy crying, it's hard. Yeah. To just sit there and watch him do it. Right. But it's just like I gotta just focus yep. out of yep. the crying and just kind of uh, let you just go through it and yeah. then kind of. Calm you down from there, right? But uh, if he's throwing, if if our son's throwing a fit, we'll I will take him because most of our, as you saw downstairs, most of our the area down there is tile floor, mm-hmm. and sometimes he's been known to kind of flop around, and I'm like, I don't need you to bust your head on the tile floor, so I will take him into his little playroom which has carpet, and I'll just sit him there, and I'll walk out, close the door, which actually helps me because now there's a little bit of a barrier between the crying, which I don't particularly care for. And so I don't, so I get a little bit of a reprieve and then he gets a little bit of time. And then I picked up something from a Jordan Peterson video once. He was talking about how he, I think it was his son. Um, he, if his son got in trouble, he would, you know, go and make him sit on the stairs, like hit their stairs and, you know, and just kind of think about things and calm down. Sure. And then once his son was calmed down, he'd be like, all right, we'll come and rejoin the family. And he said, and once we were done, we were done. Mm-hmm. Like don't bring it up anymore. Sure. And I noticed that my son would when he gets you know when he gets like throwing a big fit and he's and sometimes it's a huge fit where he's like trying to kick walls and rolling around and just like literally a physical temper t- temper tantrum. And then sometimes he's just you know kind of throwing a fit and just upset and just you know not a lot of movement but a little bit. And so I'll put him in his room and then we'll, you know when he comes out sometimes he comes out and he's all like car car this car is blue blah 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 and he's like like nothing had ever <laughs> happened it's amazing and i was just like we'll go with it yeah like all right yeah it's a blue car buddy uh, you know like hey why don't you come up over here you know um you got your juice or whatever you know whatever it is that we're you know we're up to sure. and so we just invite him back because sure. i'm like one thing i you were talking about like you don't like you didn't like this and i don't think my mom ever did it i don't remember I don't think she did. I just know I don't like it. Is when somebody's upset with you to hang it over your head. Yeah. And I don't like doing that. So I'm like, look, if we're going to be done, we're going to be done. Right. And then if we have to, if, if it comes up again, we'll, we'll deal with it then. But otherwise done is done. Yes. You know, yeah, I definitely and, agree with that. It's like, why revisit something and right. get emotional again? Right. When we could have just be moved past it. Right. You know, so don't want to come out. I mean, if he comes out and he's all happy, I'm not going to be like, did you draw your ass up? Blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm not going to, you know, well, it's because I, I just think that's that, when you're talking with your partner. Right. If you guys have an argument, you know, a couple hours and you resolve it. Right. And a couple hours later and you bring it, say, you know, make a co- off color comment or something about it. Right. You're right back into this yeah. argument. And, and adults do that all the time. Right. And it's like, that's not, I don't think it's healthy, mm-hmm. nor is it smart. To right, kind of do because it's just as you said, if you're done, there's still this to be done. Yeah, and we can you know, move on from it. It's always that you know, it's it's the men, you know, men. We always are like, <laughs> a woman comes in, she's like, "Well, you did this last week, blah 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 blah," and you're like, "Really? Like seriously, we're gonna bring that back up?" You know, <laughs> uh, and men do it too. I I mean, I'm not trying to be sexist here on camera where everybody can take me to task, but you get a much off. Right, right. He'll do it all day long, right? But no, seriously, men do it as well. <laughs> And I've probably done it myself, you know, you know, when you get really annoyed and you're like, oh, well, I guess we're going there again, aren't we? <laughs> you know, and, and it produces a very useless effect. Yeah. Because nobody's ever been like, man, I'm glad they brought that back up because it really set me straight. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, this, this doesn't happen. I mean, if you need to revisit the topic to right. really make some someone understand it i mean there's that's a different scenario sure yeah you're doing it to instigate them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that's what people do they're they're not like you know now that we're both calm yeah i like to talk about <laughs> no, some of usually... the things that happened earlier because i'm I'm still kind of bothered by it and i think we're in a position now that we can talk about it like no nah, that's not <laughs> that that's not, not how, how most goes. people uh, yeah. function and it would be easier if we did but right obviously guilty of not doing that gotcha so. so here's my here's my biggest problem with peaceful parents that i've interacted with is they like to say that if somebody spanks another kid, uh, their kid, not another kid, <laughs> good lord, don't spank somebody else's kid. Um, if they, if somebody spanks, they, they they call all spanking abuse. Do you look at it as abuse? I do. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you some tough questions. Okay. All right, 
And you do not, I mean, I'm not pulling your, your heart string here, so you're more than welcome. I love my mama to death until she passed away in 2016. Mm -hmm. She was extremely abused when she was a kid. Mm -hmm. And when I say abused, and, and it's okay that I tell the story. I, I know that she wouldn't, she wouldn't mind. Um, she would, her dad would come home drunk, and she had a sister and like several brothers. And he would come upstairs drunk, pull her and her sister out of the bed by their hair, throw them down the stairs, and stomp on their head. Just, just crap like that. Like stuff that virtually no one would argue as abuse, mm -hmm. right? Like spanking, people are like, that's not abuse, that's abuse, or whatever. This yeah, is stuff that is that, cut and dry abuse. Right, like yeah. nobody's going to argue with that, right? And I was having a conversation with my dad because he was like, son, you're, you know, you're a good son. And we were, we were talking about some things. And he said, you know, your mom was abused. And he said, and her big thing was to not, she wanted what she called break the cycle. Sure. Um, not the Joshua Smith show just break the cycle of abuse, the just chain of abuse. And so she was determined not to treat her kids the way that she was raised. Sure. But we still got spanked, mm -hmm. mostly me. My brother and my sister were total goody two-shoes. <laughs> I was in trouble all the time. Like like the running joke was I got a spanking daily, sometimes just because because my mama might have missed one. Now, that's not really how it played out, but that's just the running joke. I gotcha. So I got spanked all the time. And one of the, you know, so the, there's, there's two issues that I have with this. Or there's a couple of issues. Um, one, I feel like it takes away from my mom's experience to say that my experience of being spanked and then my son, who's gotten way less than what I got, like way less. So it's like, there's, there's this like, almost like drop off my mom. Got, it in a comparative way. Right. You're, and then there was me and my You don't son. want to compare those, th those right. two things. And I feel like using that same word is kind of like saying, well, when a guy punches a woman and knocks her down and then sexually assaults her that's rape but also if he took her out to the bar and you know coerced her or something something well, might say drinks. yeah that's what <laughs> drinks let's not do that here but but like 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 something where some people would argue it is and some people would yeah. argue it isn't know. right and so i think there's like this this it, it diminishes some people that have had it so how do that's we a, you can look at it that way but uh I define abuse mm -hmm. um, for children or even adults mm -hmm. as something that just is neg negatively affecting them. Okay. Right. Um, again, as my son's protector and his, you know, guide to being mm -hmm. a, my, my goal is to make sure he's a good, strong willed man. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to make sure he is, you know, able to take care of, Himself, his family, if he chooses to have one, and whoever else he chooses to right. care for. If, it, if it's just himself, I want him to be able to take care of all of his, right everything. Um, so anything that I think might negatively negatively affect affect him, mm -hmm. which I have no positive uh, memory of being spanked. Right. I can only have a negative feelings and associations with okay. it. Um, just like the yelling and such as that. Right. So I'm like, it's not, it's something that I would put in a category of abuse. It's can be a broad tent mm -hmm. from that. Sure. There's varying degrees, but I mean, if it causes some negative harm, I, I don't see a point in arguing the, the minor stuff of was that abuse or was that, I'm right. like, okay, if you don't define it that way, that's fine in your house. Right. But, uh, I'm not going to fight you about it. Okay. But, um, for mine. This right. is my this that's my line in my house. Right. Cuz cuz the big problem that I have is that I would never go to my mom and and say, "Yeah, I got spanked." And I never got spanked. I I mean, I I got spanked. I don't think my mom ever left a mark on me. Um, you know, maybe a a, a, a red butt, you know, but yeah. like not like a welt or anything like that, right? right? Um, it's no, not like no a bruises, bruises or right? Anything. Like none of that stuff, right? And so I I would have trouble telling my mom like that is abuse because i feel like it would diminish her experience but then also i don't think there's a point to tell you to, like to tell you well your, i think that's what i think it's the message that gets communicated and i think that's why there's such pushback against this whole peaceful parenting is because it kind of gets it throws everything in the bucket and then the other point is that my mom when she passed in 2016 i mean i'm still bitter about it okay not of her just i'm like you know there's all these dirt bags out there and my mom was a good person. Sure. And so I have the absolute most fond, like my mom was, I, I, I don't, I was, you couldn't get any closer to your parent, I don't think, 
than I was with my mom. Sure. So I look at it and I say, I have trouble even defining it as abuse because I have such a positive memory. And I think a lot of people do, right, that grew up with spankings. Sure. Normal spankings, not the beatings. I mean, just normal spankings, you know. And, and, I, and, and, and I'm making the distinction where, like, you know, if you're – if you haul off and punch your child or you smack them so hard that their nose bleeds or, or you know, you're leaving like finger marks sure. on their face, you know, stuff like that. I'm saying like that's I'll, I'll call that a beating. But if you're like just, you know, a couple spanks on the butt, you know, or maybe, a you know, four or five or something like that, you know, I, I would say those are so drastically different. And then the people that as a rule of as a general rule, it seems like the people that got the regular spankings. Mm -hmm generally have a very positive view of their parents. So, what's up, buddy? Oh, well, not yet. We're almost done. You want to say hello to everybody? He wants to go downstairs? How about five minutes? Five minutes? Yeah, we'll go downstairs in five minutes, buddy. How about that? Downstairs right now? Can we wait five minutes? It doesn't sound like we're going to wait five minutes. This is what I think somebody missed their nap, huh? <laughs> so give me five minutes, buddy, okay? We'll see if this works. We may have to we may have to cut this short real quick. So so the the, the problem that I have is that it because there's such a vast distinct difference and because people um have such fond memories of their parents despite spanking, I feel like it's not a good term to use. You know, that we should be a little bit more clear and say, okay, well, this is definitely abuse. This is something else. And all of them are un are, are not preferred. So I can, I'll tell you this. My grandfather, mm -hmm. my grandmother, and my mom, or the, my aunt as well, were the adults that I had in my life growing up. Right. Um, all got, got spanked by all of them. Mm -hmm. I have no, I have, you know, I, I think highly of them still, right. regardless of that. I do not. Not, I would never say they abused me for that. Okay. That's just nonsense to say. Okay. In my opinion. Sure, sure. Uh, but my standard for myself and my son and my household okay. is I don't want him to ever think that way because he okay. we're not we're not the same person. Sure, sure. I can't tell you he's going to think the same way I do. Right. And he may have a different experience in his mind may develop in a different way to where he does believe it is. But okay. I don't ever want him to think that it came from me. Right. Okay. And, you know, if anything else, he can always say, hey, dad and I always had a conversation instead of, you know, spankings or whatever. Um, and he may have been, been able to grow up the, the same way and take it the same way I did and say, hey, it wasn't abuse. I didn't like it. And I don't have any fond memory of sure. being spanked or that. Right. Those particular moments. But overall, it was positive, I guess. Right. Right. But that's I'm trying. I'm just going for something different. Gotcha. Regardless of if it's if it matters a whole lot, I don't know. But that's just what I'm going with. Right. Okay, I got you. So it sounds more like a rather than a all spanking by everyone is abuse and I'm gonna tell everybody about it. It's more like, hey, for me and my family, mm -hmm. this is how we're doing it. Yeah. And you're free to make your own decision and determine. For me, I believe that um, I understand that you may see it differently, but I see it this way. This is how I want to raise my son based on my personal experience and based on, you know, my worldview of things. And so it sounds like you're a little bit more flexible maybe with the term yeah. or maybe less dogmatic. Let's put it that way. Because I think that's what gets people. And I think that's why so many people kind of are like, because it's weird because people like, they'll just leap and they'll be like, oh, well, if a kid doesn't get a, a whooping every now and then, like, you know, they're going to turn out to be a, you know, a criminal. And I'm like, well, maybe not. I mean, my, my brother and my sister got one spanking ever their entire life. Neither one of them are anywhere close to being a criminal. And I was way closer to being a criminal than they ever were, <laughs> right? In fact, sometimes I probably was. I just didn't get caught, right? And and I got spankings all the time. Um, so we all are different people, yeah. you know, and we respond. Yeah, like, seriously, <laughs> my little brother, my mom would say, Joe. Do you want a hug or a spanking? And this is what he would do. <laughs> this is what he would do. He'd go. And he would like think about it. And I'm like, dude, what, what, you what, have is, an option? <laughs> what is there to think about? 
hello, the answer is you want to hug every time, no matter what, you know? But he actually would think about it. And he would be like, mom, I probably deserve a spanking, but I would really like a hug. And I'm like, who is this kid? He's not my brother. <laughs> like, what in the world? Like, you know? He understood and, what he was doing. <laughs> right. And and, and, you know, and I think he meant it. I don't think he was being manipulative. But I, I, but I think he meant it. I think he really thought about it. He was like, well, you know, I guess you're right, mom. I was probably bad. And I'm like, man, okay, that would have never worked on me. I would have been like, hug, hug, hug. You know, mom would have been like, Leroy. I, was, she went, I went by Leroy. She'd be like, do you? I'd be like, hug. <laughs> right? Like, before she finished the sentence. So. Yeah, like if I knew that was an option. I gotcha. Yeah, because, you know, the, 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 the thing I run into all the time, it, it really is over the spanking issue. And it's and it's like I have the view that if you can get away from spanking, you should. Yeah, because I because I that, think we had that conversation yeah. too. It was like uh, you said it's minimal, right? Like minimal or none at all. Like I've I, I knew I've I've heard guys that are like, you know, if I got in trouble, my dad wouldn't let me sit on the couch with him during TV time. I had to sit on the floor, like mm -hmm. on the carpet or whatever. And he's like, and that that just really you know that got me. But I never got a spanking. I'm like, all right, well. And, and from what I watched my little brother and my little sister and, and other kids, I'm like, kids are different. Yeah. And so I don't subscribe to this idea that you just got to spank them because I'm like, maybe they don't need one. Maybe something else will work. Mm -hmm. Maybe time out in a chair for five minutes is plenty. Maybe you need to have a sit down and a heart to heart with them. Right. Like, I don't know. Like, it depends on your child. And I think that's the role of a parent is to figure out what's the least invasive way to course correct mm -hmm. and develop them so that they become a good functioning adult mm -hmm. to me that's the goal of every parent and i'm willing to bet that if people really looked at it that way they would actually not need to spank very often sure and, and some people might even argue at all but i'll, I'll leave it at just not very often right? yeah, that's fine you i know? mean Again, it's minimal, minimalizing. Right. Now, I've definitely come close. Mm -hmm. I've definitely been angry enough to like, like, you know, just ready to pop them. Like, right. But why? Right. Why would you do this right now? Right. I'm like, you're very angry. Yeah. I'm like, you need to remove yourself. From right. This. Yeah. So it's like, all right. Yeah. I can't handle these things when I'm being emotional. Right. So it's like, all right. I need to remove. Think about well, it. Well, then you run the risk of doing too much. Absolutely. For right. Sure. I mean, not like beat them to a pulp or anything right. too much, but like maybe just spank them harder than you meant. Yeah. You yeah know? I mean, even then it could just be when we play, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's a boy, you've got a boy. Yep. I'm sure you get rough once in a while. Yep. Wrestling around. And he knows stuff. how to say uncle, you know, <laughs> I taught him like to say uncle when yeah. I pinned him down, he'll be like, uncle, he says, he's starting to say it quicker and quicker now. So it's kind of losing its fun. Yeah. Cause like now he's just like, like I get him pinned down he'll be like, uncle. And I'm like, really? Like you, I just barely got there. You can get out of this one. So, <laughs> but no, I mean, and, you know, we got rough and he's yeah. got me times and I've got him a little yeah. rougher at times and, you know, playing around and right. it's, it's going to happen for yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, especially it's, if I can do that while we're playing and having fun, it's like, I got to realize I'm, you know, right. Almost 200 pounds, much bigger than this little boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and, and, and I think the other thing is that, um, uh, where was I going? I, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, trying to bring it back. Uh, I forgot it. You know, but I, I, I think that the, the least that we can do, the better off you're going to be. And I tend to look at spanking, even just normal spanking, like a swat or two, is very rudimentary. Mm. I don't think that, and it, 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 for it's me, like touching fire, you get burned. Yeah, and I don't, I don't necessarily take it off the table because I'm like, I don't know, maybe there'll be, an, maybe there'll be a time where I need to, you know. Um, but I try not to, and, and the oh, I know where I was gonna go. I think one thing that help that helps me, in and not find reasons to spank him, mm -hmm. is to say, he's a two year old boy. He's gonna do things. Yeah. He is going to draw on the wall. Um, now he's got scolded a couple times for drawing on the wall. Not much, just a little bit, once or twice. But most of the, like, and it's only on. It was actually only on the fireplace where I couldn't get it out. And I just kind of was like, look what you did. Why are you, you like, now I can't get it out. You know, and I was kind of upset. I don't even think he cried. Like, he was just like, okay. okay. <laughs> you know, but like, you could probably look on my door. There's some drawing there, some blue drawing. There's some blue drawing on the, you know, on the, in the hallway there. Mm. And I'm just like, little boys draw on the wall. Now, when I catch him, I tell him, no, don't draw on the wall. Draw on the piece of paper. But otherwise, I don't make a big deal because I'm like, I expect it. Mm. I, you know, and, and 
I don't want to be mad at him. No. Like, that's no fun at all. In fact, sometimes when I get mad at him, I kind of feel bad later. I'm just like, oh, man, really? Yeah, it's like, like, why did I waste that time being mad with you? Yeah, and so I, I, I try to, as much as I can, just be like, I expect that this is going to happen. I do that with my wife as well. I'm like, there are going to be times where she's just annoyed with me. Yeah. Period. And there's no reason to be mad at her for doing what is it happens like the, you know and he's going to get upset he's going to spill his milk he's going to knock his milk off he's going to you know whatever and i've got to just try to balance he's he's a 2 year old 3 year old mm-hmm. whatever um with okay let's try to figure out how to maybe prevent this behavior because there's, there's some things i don't want to have happen like if he throws like i think he <laughs> he has dotted his grandma's eye and he's dotted his mom's eye so far mm-hmm. <laughs> Not, not, I mean, just like, I think one of he was being too rough and the other one, I think he got mad and threw something. Right. So he does get in trouble there. Sure. Um, and that's kind of my mama's fault because when I was, when I was being raised, she was like, she, she literally said this. She was like, if you ever hit a woman, don't come home. I'm beat the shit out of you. Like, right. like, and, and she said that a lot, like almost daily. Mm-hmm. And there was no reason to say, it. like, I wasn't out there hitting women. She just was. Like it was her, something she wanted to mm-hmm. make sure. That was her, her. Her experience was, you do not hit women. So I learned very, very clearly, do not hit a woman because mama will beat the shit out of you. Mm-hmm. And so now I kind of carry that over. And I'm like, you don't hit your mama. You don't hit your grandma. End of story. Like, he'll get away He'll get away with hitting me a lot sooner than he will hitting mama or grandma. And so I will, sure. especially grandma, because grandma's older. She's like 70 some years old. And he's actually getting to the point now where he can really hurt somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, with the with the right toy, and but he, he you know, I, I think we curbed it a long time ago. Me just by raising my voice when I didn't like something, and it was funny because the other two, my you know, my wife and my mother in law were like, "Why is he yelling at him?" And like, <laughs> just to put this in context, I can yell and then I can yell because my wife, she like she'll watch debates, political debates, and she's like, "Why are they yelling at each other?" So her version of yelling is um, comes a little bit sooner than my version. Sure, and I um, think it does a lot of times with the difference between men and women. And, and yeah. Things, but. So I, I I would I would kind of scold him earlier on, and then they would, and then at first they were like, you know, Grandma's like, do you think he's scared of his daddy? And I was like, you know, I'd be joking. I'm like, well, he better be. Yeah, yeah. Know, bust him upside, <laughs> you know, it, you know, and then but then later they noticed how come he only listens to his daddy and not us? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Remember couple months ago when you were giving me a hard time about raising my voice i'm like you know and and now i just most in most most cases a stern talk stern voice is sufficient yeah you know which is great because like if i if that's all i got to do just to get him to stop doing something (laughs) that's fabulous i mean i've got a lot of stories i'll I'll tell you off air i can't tell them on here because i don't know people how people might feel about them right but yeah just with other children just stern talking to them right it usually fixes the the situation, right. like say at the park or any, mm-hmm. say any of those places. Right, and it's uh, always interesting. Or even I'll, I'll tell you one: we're at a at, at the park playing. Mm-hmm. Her this woman, her boy was getting rough, and he mm-hmm. she was very absent. She was there, but she was absent. You know, she right. was playing on her phone or whatever else she was doing. And sure, we all do it at time to time. When right, the kids are playing, but you know, he was getting rough with other kids, and I'm just like. Sternly tell, listen, you need to stop or you need to go sit by your mom. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, like, so the person I'm with, they're like, why would you can't say that to someone else's kid? I'm like, no, he needs to be told right, right, right. now. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and I don't see no one else saying it. So yeah. I'm taking it upon myself to do it. Sure, yeah. Now, I mean, I'm not going to go and spank the boy. Right, right, yeah. Uh, I could, I will, I jokingly say this a lot. Maybe a joke, maybe not. Don't know. But, <laughs> Uh, I definitely feel quicker I could spank another someone else's child before I spank my own. Okay. But I don't know that I would ever touch somebody else's kid. I probably wouldn't, but I mean but, I could I could feel it before I can do it. Fair you enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. I yeah, it's it's kinda of funny. I I'm kind of of the opinion, um, you know, what don't embarrass me. Don't don't make another adult have to correct you. Right. You know, 'cause I'm gonna I'm gonna be upset with you for that. You know, but you know, I think it's uh uh yeah, I think I think I'm probably a lot more aligned with peaceful parenting than it may seem. I just don't take it off the table necessarily, yeah, but and I try to leave it to the extremes if I can. See, even if it's not a uh, taken off the table, mm-hmm. your goal is to minimize it, right? And if your goal is to minimize it, you're being mindful, right? 
And I think the being just being mindful to saying, hey, I can approach this in a different way and trying to what can I do before I resort to this? Mm -hmm. You can probably get there first and you'll probably fix it before you resort to, right. you know, a physical punishment. Got it. Any last words? Um, I wouldn't actually hit someone else's kid. Ah. <laughs> that was a joke, okay? <laughs> I'll edit that part out. <laughs> They'll be like, I said it. I'll be like, I don't remember that. <laughs> so, all right. Um, your podcast, what's the name of it? Oh, my podcast is called Libertarian Friendship Simulator. Okay, so if you uh, watch it, be we mindful. Barely talk, we barely talk politics. It's, uh, what'd you say? What'd you it's call? racy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's racy. It's uh, crude humor. Definitely. So don't go into it with a light heart or your children, all right? Yeah, listen with headphones. Yeah, listen with headphones. Uh, a lot of fun. It was great having you on, man. Uh, I hope everybody got something out of this. And if you need to roast me, then you roast me, whatever it is. Um, but hey, you know, ultimately, I think that the, 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 the least amount of force that you can use in any situation is always best, whether it's with your kids or even a robber in your house. Although if you come in my house, I'm probably not going to be oh, thinking too much. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, not gonna think, I'm probably not going to be thinking too little force. But if I do, you know, I think it's I think it is for the best if you can get away with it. Um, there would just be some situations where I'm probably not going to be thinking that way Yeah. in my house more. So. Um, but yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, and, and if you can avoid spanking, I think it's, uh, and, you, and you not avoid spanking your kid runs amok and is hitting other kids like that, that to me is counterproductive. Actually, in the other I do direction. got one last thing to say. Yeah. Um, cause everyone always argues that there's no way your child's acts right. Um, my child is probably one of the most well-behaved kids I've ever seen. I mean, he, we, he's been over here for hours today. So we are, we are in studio as you can see. And he brought his son, and they were up here playing for quite a while. I think my wife came and took him down. And they had a blast. My son had a lot of fun with him. He missed his nap, so we will pay for that <laughs> later. Um, Hopefully it's an early bedtime. <laughs> uh, we're going to try. We'll see how that works. Sometimes he, when he misses his nap, it become, everything becomes a huge deal. Ah. And so it becomes very difficult to do anything because he's just his emotions are running amok. And you're like... Do you want to put on these pajamas? No! Oh, yeah. And you're like, oh, You've had Lord. plenty of those nights. You're like, oh, my God. And, and you can't get him to bed fast enough, except for you can't because he's not and cooperating. And I sleep the entire time. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's rough. So, But anyway, it's great, it great to have you come on and talk about peaceful parenting. Um, it's not as bad as I thought it might be because <laughs> sometimes I've had some really poor interactions with peaceful parents. And I'm like, hey, maybe if you want to claim to be a peaceful parent, you should be a peaceful adult while you're at it. <laughs> Yes. Because I've had some, like <laughs> I had one guy, everywhere. I had one guy on Facebook. I disagreed on what a study said. I went and read the study and I said, man, I don't think the study says what you're claiming it says, mm -hmm. which was the emotional outcome of children that are spanked. Mm -hmm. And I read it and I, and I was ready to defend why I felt like that wasn't what the study. And I think the study actually said, you know, kind of suggested that along the way as well. And he like, they started fine. And then the conversation just started slowly escalating. And I was like, eh, it'll be all right. He's just, you know, a little tense. And then all of a sudden, he just blew up. And he cussed me out, blocked me on Facebook <laughs> right after he messaged me, telling me, like, you know, you love abusing kids. I don't know. It was some bizarre crazy. And I was like, what in the world? I'm like, dude, I didn't even say we should beat our kids. All I said was, I don't think this study says what you think it says. That's it. That's all I said. And he went bananas. And I was like, dude. I'm having trouble believing you're a peaceful anything. So <laughs> yeah, you need to it, calm the hell down because I know the hell you wouldn't talk to me in my face like that. Right. It, <laughs> like, this is crazy. Yeah, like, he cussed me out. It's always oh a good, uh, good uh, uh, way to think. If you wouldn't say it to someone's face, yeah. the internet's not the place absolutely, to say it either. Absolutely. So, all right, great show. Um, glad you listened in. And make sure you check out some of the other shows. On uh, You can go to youtube.libertydad.com and leave us a comment from wherever you're watching. And see you next time. We're out. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to LibertyDadPodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to Facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. 
Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to LibertyDad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.